Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joshua Nair. I'm one of the residents of Penn State. Um, and I'd like to thank Sages as well as the session moderators for this opportunity to present our work. These are our, rel our disclosures. Polydocal is, is a very common problem that surgeons face and potentially presents a challenging condition. There have been many previous uh, algorithms presented as far as how to manage this, uh, including pre- and intraoperative ERCP. However, ERCP isn't without risk. Up to 10% of patients develop post-ERCP pancreatitis. Some of the reasons that attributed to this include multiple cannulation attempts of the duct, injection or manipulation of the pancreatic duct, as well as mechanical trauma uh, during the procedure. In a recent meta-analysis uh, published in JAMA Surgery, uh, the authors reviewed various uh, treatment algorithms for management of cholelithiasis, including preoperative, postoperative, intraoperative ERCP, as well as laparoscopic common bile duct exploration. What they found was intraoperative ERCP had the highest chance of success had a lower overall morbidity, and resulted in a shorter hospital stay. We often utilize an anti-grade wire rendezvous cannulation approach in order to facilitate ERCP during cholecystectomy. And we hypothesized that by using this technique, we could reduce the rate of post-ERCP pancreatitis. Uh, these are some relative images of what this technique looks like. Uh, on the top left, you'll see a typical cholangiogram with a filling defect in the distal common bile duct uh, demonstrated by the blue arrow. On the second image, uh, you'll see us passing a wire antegrade uh, through the cystic duct, through the distal common bile duct, and ultimately into the duodenum. In C, this is a view, uh, an endoscopic view through, through a side viewing scope of what the wire uh, exiting the ampulla looks like. And in D, this wire is snared. Uh, in order to facilitate uh, passing a, a sphincterotome over this wire, which you can see in E. So there, the sphincterotome is passed through the common bile duct, and then ultimately that wire is removed and replaced with a retrograde wire going, going up past the hepatic bifurcation in F, which allows us to perform our various ERCP techniques to clear the duct. <clears throat> We performed an IRB, uh, retro, an IRB approved retrospective review of all patients who underwent this technique for cholelithiasis during cholecystectomy from 2012 to 2018. We included patient characteristics, pre and post operative laboratory values, and any complications or readmissions. Uh, the rendezvous technique was conducted during laparoscopic or open cholecystectomy when there was evidence of cholelithiasis with or without preoperative biliary pancreatitis or cholangitis. We identified 37 patients who underwent this technique during, uh, during the research period. 27 were female. The mean age was 50. Uh, BMI ranged from 21 to 50. 17 of these patients were undergoing cholecystectomy for acute cholecystitis, and 15 of these patients underwent a transgastric ERCP due to a previous history of ruin y gastric bypass. The mean OR time was 214 minutes, ranging from 105 to 420. Mean ERCP time was about 30 minutes. 33 patients had biliary stents placed and there were no cannulations or injections of the pancreatic duct during any of the ERCPs. And there was no intraoperative complications related to the ERCP itself, such as perforation or bleeding. Postoperatively, we didn't uh, see any evidence of post-ERCP pancreatitis. There was one patient who had severe pancreatitis preoperatively. That patient did have elevated enzymes postoperatively, but they were downtrending, and she ultimately uh, recovered completely. One patient was taken for uh, an EGD in the postoperative period due to acute blood loss anemia uh, in order to rule out post sphincterotomy bleeding, and uh, that was negative. One patient did undergo early repeat ERCP uh, because of an increase in their uh, T bili, uh, and we found that her uh, ERCP stent had become occluded and required replacement. There were three patients in the series that developed subhepatic abscesses that required percutaneous drainage and antibiotics. 
And then there was one patient who had the transgastric ERCP who developed a dislodged G-tube, which required reoperation. In conclusion, we found that the anti-grade uh, rendezvous technique was both effective and safe. Uh, we found that it eliminated a two-stage management, such as a pre- or post-operative ERCP. We found that our ERCP times were short and ultimately eliminated manipulation of the pancreatic duct, which is what we attributed our success in eliminating post-ERCP pancreatitis. All of the complications requiring intervention, uh, drainage or return to the OR, were not related to ERCP and were more likely related to the disease process itself of acute chol cholecystitis. However, we did find a high rate of subhepatic abscesses, uh, whether this was related to the acute cholecystitis itself or was at all related to our increased manipulation of the biliary tract, our ERCP is unclear and will re require further uh, evaluation and research. Ultimately, uh, we, did, we did find positive results in our series, but we would recommend that the surgeon must do what he or she is familiar with, whether that be following a, a preoperative ERCP type algorithm, performing intraoperative ERCP if they're familiar with that and if their institution allows so, or if the patient requires it undergoing a common bile duct exploration. Thank you very much. I'm happy to answer any questions at this time.